Good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. I just kicked a bottle of Prince E84. Anyway, we have this beer from Double Trouble Brewing. Double Trouble Brewing's in Toronto. This beer is brewed at uh, Wellington Brewing Company in Guelph, Ontario, still under contract. So this is Prison Break Breakout Pilsner from Double Trouble Brewing. It's 5% alcohol by volume. Uh, for those of you that don't know, if, if a beer is brewed at uh, Wellington, it will usually have a fairly Wellington-esque taste to it, mostly because you have to use Wellington's yeast. Smart thing to do as a brewer, you don't want random yeast floating around in the air to infect your beers. But this is a Pilsner. So this Pilsner will be brewed with Wellington's yeast. Wellington makes mostly English-style ales. So, I don't know how this Pilsner is going to go, but I'm really willing to try it. It has really cool artwork. I mean, right here is the uh, robber breaking out. There's his ladder. There's the guy running around with money bags. I mean, it's a really cool looking uh, can. Really busy. Uh, I find it really amusing, though, that they actually advertise the address of the brewery, which would be the Wellington Brewery, because most contract brewers don't do that. That's the one thing I can say for Claude and Nathan. They at least admit where their beer is brewed. Most places like Spearhead. Spearhead, for instance, how many of you know that they're brewed at Spear at uh, Cool Brewing? Mm, that's no good. One second. Sorry, the beer exploded a little bit when I opened it, and uh, I got beer at a lot of different places. Okay, so, all it's going to do is make another key on my keyboard not work very well. Let's pour this thing. Okay. Okay, looks pretty much right for the uh, style, slight haze to it, nice golden color, nice big head, it, it looks like a pilsner, uh, that head is pretty pillowy, much like the breast of a beautiful woman, you know, sleep on the breast of a beautiful, anyway, um, looks really nice. It, it's slightly darker than I would have expected for the style, but it, it, it's pretty right. Pretty much spot on. Um, out of the can? Don't smell it out of the can. Let's just say, out of the can, don't smell it. Don't, don't put your nose to the can. As I continue to put my nose to the can. It doesn't smell good out of the can. It actually smells like a corn adjunct lager out of the can. Uh, it smells like your average... Uh, it, it smells like, like a Labatt Blue or something out of the can. It smells like a big macro company Pilsner out of the can. Out of the glass, get a little bit of those earthy tones you should smell from a, from a Pilsner. A little bit of the earthy tones that you would get from, from a Noble Hop. Um, and and German malts. Not nearly as strong as you really should get them though. But they're there. Cheers. Cheers, let's try it. Let's hope it tastes better than it smells. Now, Double Trouble has made Hops and Robbers, which is their IPA. Hops and Robbers was a very good uh, pub IPA, as in it was a starter IPA. It was an IPA to give somebody that never really had IPAs except for maybe Alexander Keiths, who thought that was a real IPA. So you give them that, it has a nice flavor to it, it gives them the right flavors, they understand the profile, they go on. It's something that can be sold as a session beer at a pub, and that's what you want. You want a bar beer to be a session beer. You want somebody to be able to sit down and drink several of them. Um, that said... I would much rather drink the Hops and Robbers than this myself. Uh, Pilsner's not my favorite style. They're, I, I do know why they exist. They're there to be nice, cold, refreshing, easy drinking beers. That's not what I want. I don't want a bland, easy drinking beer. I want a flavor balm 
is what I, I personally want. That's why stouts and porters are my big thing. Again, that being said, even as a Pilsner, not the greatest offering right here. There's nothing bad about it. I mean, I would pick this up before... I would pick this up before Labatt Blue. I would pick this up before Koenig Pilsner. I would pick this up before... Uh, people are going to get weird with me on this, but I would pick this up before Pilsner or Kell even because of the price difference between them. Um, and because you're supporting local when you buy this other than Pilsner or Kell. Um, but again, it's not a great beer. It's not as earthy as it should be. It's not as grassy as it should be. It's not as bitter on the background as it should be. It is another pub beer, which is what they went for. They went for a tap room beer. They want to get it into as many pubs as they can. And you can't fault them for that when they're a new brewery. I mean, a craft brewery has a choice to make when they start. They can either go full out flavor bomb and hope to make it, or they can go with something that can get into a brewery and compete with the big guys and make it a lot faster. Uh, they they went the get into as many bars as they could route. And again, I can't fault them on that, but I can't be excited about that. It does have a little bit of an earthy taste to it. It's fairly sweet on the forefront. It doesn't have the taste of the noble noble hops as much as it should. Again, a little bit of an earthy background to it. It's it's kind of just a uh, a no. It's it's like a noble hopped lager. Actually, actually, you know what it's more like? It's more like the uh, Alexander Keith's Halatoya one uh, single hop ale. It's a lot more like that. Sweet on the forefront, hoppy on the background, a little bit of a spice note on the background, a little earthy hoppiness on the background. It, it, it's more like that than anything else. Um, can I fault it as a beer? No, I can't. Uh, I'd give it a 6 out of 10. I mean, it's a drinkable beer. If I was at a bar, I could drink it. If a friend of mine bought it, I wouldn't have a complaint about drinking it. But is it something that I would personally go out and spend my money on again? Not really. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's nothing spectacular about it. There's nothing that makes me want to drink it. So the uh, Double Trouble Breakout Pilsner, the, well, the Breakout Prison Break Pilsner, sorry, the Prison Break Breakout Pilsner. Fuck, that's a stupid name. Just call it Breakout Pilsner or Prison Break Pilsner. Why Prison Break Breakout Pilsner? It's drinkable. There's nothing foul about it, there's nothing offensive about it other than the smell out of the can. And there's nothing to uh, write home about. I mean, it's drinkable. Claude and Nathan did another good pub beer. You can't fault them for what they did. Um, yeah. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Down the hatch. Do it.